Hi everyone. So you know how here in America we begin a new year on January 1st? In China, they don't start a new year on January 1st. Their new year can start as early as January 21st or as late as February 20th. It all has to do with the moon. Something else that's different that China does every year is dedicate each year to a different animal. It is said that whatever year you were born in determines what animal you are. This new year, which starts on February 12th for them, is the year of the ox. You might be an ox if you were born in 2021, 2009, 1997, 1985, 1973, or 1961. If you are an ox, you are said to be patient, brave, humble, blunt, hardworking, a creature of habit, cautious, headstrong, slow to anger, and dependable. Other animals that have years dedicated to them. Tigers. Rabbits. Dragons. Snakes. Horses. Sheep. monkeys, roosters, dogs, pigs, and rats. While I would love to be a dog, I'm a dragon. Now, why am I telling you this? because I have a book to read to you. It is called The Year of the Ox, Tales from the Chinese Zodiac, written by Oliver Chin and illustrated by Maya Alcorn. Now, before I start reading the book to you, I wanna tell you a cool story first. When I got this book in the mail, I opened it up to start reading it and guess what I found. I got an autograph from the author. It says, Happy Year of the Ox, Oliver Chin. How cool is that? While I read this book, see if you can spot any tigers, rabbits, dragons, snakes, horses, sheep, monkeys, roosters, dogs, pigs, or rats. Also, while you listen to this book, I want you to find examples of the main character, Olivia, being patient, or brave, or humble, or blunt, or hardworking, or cautious, or headstrong, or being dependable, or being someone hard to upset, or being a creature of habit. Now, on to the book. The Year of the Ox, Tales from the Chinese Zodiac, written by Oliver Chin, illustrated by Maya Alcorn. For nearly 5,000 years, the Chinese culture has organized time in cycles of 12 years. This Eastern calendar is based upon the movement of the moon as compared to the Western, which follows the sun and is symbolized by the zodiac circle. An animal that has unique qualities represents each year. Therefore, if you are born in a particular year, then you share the personality of that animal. Now people worldwide celebrate this two week long festival in the early spring and enjoy the start 
of another Chinese New Year. Light glistened off the morning dew, and the rising sun welcomed another day. Inside the stables, Mama and Papa Ox yawned after a long night. Resting in their bed of hay, they tickled their new baby. Mama smiled. Hello there, honey. Only a few hours old, the youngster was rustling about already. She had a sweet and peaceful manner, so Papa suggested, let's call her Olivia. The proud parents introduced the calf to their friend. She'll be a big gal, they all agreed. Mama whispered, tomorrow you'll meet the farmer's daughter. Her name is May. During her first visit, the girl petted Olivia and combed her hair. I know we'll be best friends, smiled May, and she adopted Olivia as her little sister. The grateful cow promised, I'll always look out for you. Sharing a bubbly spirit, the girls played tag, hide and seek, and kick the can. In the countryside, the pair loved to stop and smell the roses, but sometimes their wild wandering would make quite a mess. Afterwards, Olivia's parents took her aside. Mama noted, there's a time and a place for fun and games. Papa added, yes, dear, it's about time you learn to pull your own weight around here. The following morning, Papa and Mama showed her the shed where they got ready for work. Every day, the bull and cow would each carry a yoke and pull a plow. Olivia wanted to pitch in, despite Mama's worries. Papa pointed out, but the yoke is heavy and tilling the ground is hard labor. Olivia boasted, I'm a big girl now, and I can handle it by myself. But try as she might, Olivia was too small to plow the fields. Many times, she got stuck in the mud and had to be rescued. Moo! After a long day, Olivia came home, dirty and plum tuckered out. After dinner, Mama advised, Dear, maybe you could try a different job. Yes, I'd like that very much, answered Olivia eagerly. The next day, May led Olivia to the nearby well to fetch some water. Carefully, May filled her bucket and balanced it upon her head. Olivia bragged, Ha, I can carry much more than you. Be careful, May warned as Olivia moseyed along with two buckets on her shoulders. They were almost home when a rooster bumped into them and crowed. Olivia slipped and spilled the water everywhere. After cleaning up, May thought of another chore for Olivia. Next week is harvest time. You could bring the rice to be milled. Olivia nodded and they prepared to collect the crop. During the harvest, May loaded stalks of grain onto Olivia's back. This is easy, smirked Olivia, but on the way to the mill, a snake darted in front of her. Startled, Olivia scattered her load all over the road. Now both girls were embarrassed. But the weekend was here, and May's parents had planned to sell their vegetables at the local farmer's market. Olivia promised to behave, so Mama and Papa let her come too. The town square bustled with buying and selling, and May's parents displayed their bounty. Olivia marveled at all the sights, sounds, and smells. Meeting a friendly rat, she followed it to a stall close by. Suddenly, a yell rang out, eek! Soon, a crowd had gathered to watch Olivia eat someone's fruit. Neighbors wagged their hooves, Papa shook his horns, and May hurried to drag her pal away. 
After the commotion subsided, Mama moaned, Darling, I guess you're not old enough to help us after all. May and her parents were disappointed too, so Olivia trudged back with her tail between her legs. At home, Olivia wanted to prove she was a hard worker, but May's parents had business in town with Mama and Papa. Leaving to tend the fields, May told Olivia, please just stay behind and out of trouble. Alone with little to do, Olivia vowed, I'll show them, somehow. Later, she heard a cry pierce the sky, Wee! As noises suddenly filled the air, Olivia rushed outside and couldn't believe her eyes. Hey, if you're not paying attention, you need to start paying attention right now, because this is my favorite part of the book. Everyone was running away from the farmland that was quickly flooding. The old dam had burst. Moo! shouted Olivia, but no one stopped to help. Immediately, she wondered, where is May? Olivia jumped into the rice paddy to search for her sister. Passerbys warned her, leave while you can. But she pressed on against the current and finally spotted May clinging to the branches of a cypress tree. Wet and worried, May was surprised to see Olivia. What are you doing here? This is no time for questions, Olivia sputtered. Get down and climb on board. Swimming towards home, Olivia picked up others stranded by the rising water. Juggling them on her shoulders, Olivia plowed ahead. At last, she climbed over the ridge to safety. But before they could catch their breath, they noticed the bank had begun to buckle. If it gave way, the water would flood the village below. May cried, we need to warn the townsfolk. Hurry up and go, replied Olivia as she pressed her shoulder against the wall. I'll hold it up. Hesitating, May hopped on her bicycle. I'll pedal as fast as I can, and you'd better still be here when I come back. Leaning against the crumbling wall, Olivia spotted a crack where water began dripping through. She needed to patch it, but didn't dare move. What could she do? Quickly, she stuck her tail into the hole. The plug held, and Olivia sighed in relief. Feeling the world's weight on her shoulders, Olivia didn't want to let everybody down. Digging her hooves into the ground, she pushed with all of her might. Moo! Time crawled by. Just then, May's family and Mama and Papa arrived with lots of helpers. As the water finally receded, Olivia took a break. She was dirty, soggy, and hungry, but was very happy. May hugged Olivia. Thanks for coming back for me. Olivia blushed. I know you'd do the same. Joyfully, Mama and Papa remarked, you two are the bravest girls in the whole world. Soon life returned to normal, and Olivia and May played their games and roamed about as before. Their parents watched how they were growing up, both hungry for adventure and strong-willed. These sisters loved each other heart and soul. May knew that Olivia was there for her when it counted, and everyone around would remember that this was a marvelous year of the ox. Years of the Ox, 2021, 2009, 1997, 1985, 1973, 1961, 1949, 1937, 1925, and 1913. People born in the Year of the Ox are patient, stout, and down to earth. They are plain spoken and hardworking. 
but sometimes they can be creatures of habit, cautious and headstrong, though they may be slow to rouse. Oxen are dependable characters indeed. The end. Did you find all the animals? Was Olivia all of those things? To check your answers, you should check out my next video. But before you go, what animal do you wish you were? What was your favorite part of the book? Is there an ox in your classroom? Tell me in the comments. Bye!